learning how to accept change, learning how to go with the web and flow. When change shows up, are you ready when opportunity knocks? Are you the kind of person who hesitates? Change happens to all of us, and I love change. It's as good as a rest, they say. One person who advocates for change and who will guide you through it is Sarah Mooney, a motivational speaker, life coach. She does a lot, and she focuses mainly on young people. Please, everybody, welcome her to the show right now. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Kobe. How are you? Great nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. First of all, you tell me, did the equator move? I know, right? Oh, or we are moving to the tropics. I don't know because... No, it is freezing. It is winter. It is it officially is winter and we just have to get used to it. It is winter now. I know. But it's great in here and warm. I know. Thank you very much for Thank the warm reception. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here this morning. I appreciate I think we start from the very beginning. Mm. Who is Sarah? I, I, I have to tell you guys, we tell most of our guests to send in pictures. Um, and video footage just to support their interviews. And I saw your photo and I was like, wow, she's really young because her picture came with her CV and she's done a lot. And I thought, wow, for, for a young woman, you've done quite a lot. Tell us about yourself and how you got into the work that you do. Yes, so first of all, Sarah is a sister, yeah. a friend, and I like to call myself a change advocate. A sister because I realize people want to deal with somebody who actually cares. Whether you're doing business or whether you're, whatever it is that you're doing, you want to deal with somebody who cares. A friend because we want to do business, we want to relate with people who we know. And then from there now, I realized that for you to grow, for you to develop, for you to excel as an individual, as a company, as a student, as an organization, mm -hmm. you have to be very adaptive to change. Right. Yeah, there's somebody you know, I mean, if we, um, you've been in a history class, he's called Charles Darwin. We remember him for the evolution theory. And he has done a lot of study uh, in very many organisms and animals and, you know, birds. And he made a note one time after his many years of experience, and he said that it is not the strongest of animals that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the ones that are most adaptive to change. Right. So, so you can be very strong, you can have a very strong personality, you can have a very strong brand even as a company. We have seen very great companies, you know, uh, you know that are household items across the world, but in a span of five, 10 years, you don't see them. Why? Right. Because they did not, accept a change that came into their space, into their market, and today they are, they are faced out. Right. They did not survive. You can also be very talented, or you have a very strong personality, but then again, if you don't use that um, personality, if you don't use that strength that you have, again, you will not survive. You can be very intelligent. We have very many gifted people here. We are looking at uh, university students. They're very, I mean, most of us who have gone through that mechanical <laughs> you know, way of life, primary, uh, secondary, and then you know, university or campus or college, wherever, you find that you have a lot of knowledge. You're very knowledgeable, you're very intelligent. But then if you don't package this knowledge well, to know how to translate it from the classroom to the marketplace, then you will not survive. Right. And you start wondering, where did I go wrong? Yeah, so I, for me, I come now and when you're asking how do I actually achieve my dreams, how do I now translate what I have, this knowledge I have, to money, to even, you know, to satisfaction to in success, life. To success, right. To success, That's yes. the pursuit of happiness. Yes, yeah. how do you do that? So for me, I come uh, at this place, how, how do you do it? Okay. Because that's the question that we are mostly asking ourselves, how do I do this? How do I get there? Yeah, and I usually say that change is the way. Change, change is the way, is the way yes. you, I, And I always say this, uh, and there is a huge saying, I think everyone knows it, that mm -hmm. um, goes, you know, you can't keep doing the same thing. And expect, and expect different, different results. Yes. That's actually the definition of insanity. Yes, exactly. Right? And mm -hmm. a lot of us actually do because it's habitual. A lot of us do the same thing. You do the same thing year after year. Even 2016, you, um, we were like, we won't do it that way. And we're back to doing it exactly because it's our comfort zones, right? Yes, yes. Talk to us a little bit before we get into the how. Mm. Um, why is change so daunting? Why is it uncomfortable? It's very uncomfortable because, you see, actually, I, for me, I will start with definition of it. And I like to say that change is the loss of something familiar. Whatever it is, you have lost a, 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 a situation that you are used to. You have lost maybe the, the, the change copy that we have possibly all of us gone through is the loss of a loved one. It's a change, it's, it's very, you know, it's very deep and it's very painful. Yeah, but how, and what you're dealing with right there is fear. 
how will I survive without this job? I've just lost my job. How will I survive if I get out of campus? I'm so used to campus life. I'm so used to my friends here in campus. Now, when I go out, what you are actually dealing with fear there. Mm. And if you're going to move to the next stage, if you're going to move into even the job market, if you're going to move into the next level, even as a person who has worked for quite a while, you have to be very ready to face the fear. Yeah, you have to be very ready to take risks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you must be a risk taker, number one, if you want to develop yourself. Because this is what happens, Kobe. We come out of university or whatever, or, or from our learning institutions, we go to workplace, and then let's say you even studied law. You studied law, and then you can, you're looking now for a job. You're looking for a job. You've now left uh, college. Then you find the only job you can find is sales and marketing. Most, most young people, that is what happens. And then you say, okay, fine, at least I can pay my bills. I don't have to call my mother for money, so I'm good. And then you just sit, you're comfortable. You're there, you're comfortable. And then you find two, three, four, five years, you're still there. And you're wondering, why did I study law? Why did I study mass comm and I'm um, doing sales here of electronics? Mm -hmm. you, you start, you can't relate. And then you, you're finding people who are younger than you. They're coming out of college. They're getting promoted. They are, they, they, they are pay, their pay is raised right. over yours. And you're wondering, why did I go? It's, it's an action you need to take. And you need to change the way you think you need to change. You need to take a risk. Mm -hmm. You have to be very ready to do that if you're going to, to get to the next level. Yeah. Risks are huge, aren't they? Yeah. I believe that. And, and um, I think a lot of the time it's fear, right? Mm. A lot of us are just scared because it's mm. something new. We're not used to it. There's, there's all, all these different things that come with it. Um, talk to us a little bit about how much fear can paralyze your destiny um, and why it's so, so important to let go of that fear. Because nothing mm. will happen. You won't die. Yeah. That's what I always say. You are not going to die. Something good will come out of you overcoming that fear. Talk yeah. to us about fear. It's amazing how we think we always, you know, we, we don't have a choice. Yeah, when y something comes and um, you have to take the next step and then you feel, how will, what will people say? If I leave this career and I get into this other thing and this is what I leave, what will people say? Fear is, somebody said it's a cancer. And mm -hmm. I, Lisa, I'd say, yeah, you're right. Because it kills every part of your strength, every strength in you. It kills every dream. It has killed more dreams than I think. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And all you have to do is listen to old people saying, exactly. I should, I would have. If that yeah. day when should I was young. Should have, could have, would have. Should have, could have, story. So I think as, as young people, this is the right time to take risks. Yeah, take risks. And then you look back at that time when you're 50, 60 and said, I'm yeah. so glad I did this. I mean, it we will have a very nice story to tell people, you know what, to tell your grandchildren and your children, you know what, this is what I did at 21. I was a second year or a third year. Yeah. I was not just a student sitting at my biggest, uh, you know, my, my biggest worry is how do I pass my mass comm paper. Yeah. No, I was doing this and I was doing this and this. Don't just sit in class. The only thing you fear most is, you know, or the only thing you can think is when will mom send money? And then from there, the only other thing we're thinking is how will I pass? No, the, think other things that you can do with the energy that you have. Because as a young person, all you have is time. Yeah. All you have is energy, dreams. And you actually have the energy to pursue them. Yeah, so fear will kill that energy when you're young. It will kill those dreams. And then you'll sit back somewhere when you're 60 and you're wondering, what you did know, I do? What did I do? Yeah. What have I done? What, what can I do? And you know, I mean, m most people actually, they die out of, you know, th 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 those kind of qu regret thoughts and, and regret. And wishy and yeah. should have, could have, would have. Yeah. I'll tell you something, guys, and uh, we, we'll take a quick break uh, and we'll come back and you can interact with Sarah. But every single thing that I have feared in my life, I did it. Mm. Because I thought, you know, if it's, if, it's that, if it's that big and if it's one of those things that will m make me feel this anxiety and butterflies and I cannot do it, mm. you know that it's exactly what you need to do. All right? Because things that don't make you feel that kind mm. of way usually are not the right thing for you. Yeah. And it's not probably your path, yeah. you know? But things that make you fear, you've got to do it. You'd rather try, fall flat on your face mm. than never have tried at all, right? Mm. Right? Are you guys ready to interact with Sarah? You are? You have some questions for her? Fantastic. All right, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. You're great, by the way. Thank you. I love it. Isn't she fantastic? Give her a hand. Okie dokie. So we take a quick break and we come back. We'll interact a little bit with Sarah. Remember, change is coming. Are you ready? That's the question. And then, of course, we thank Nivia 
for helping us here on Better Living achieve the perfect balance. We'll be meeting our three ladies this morning. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Yes. Okay. And we are back, everybody, talking, of course, about adapting to change. And we all need change. I believe so. All right. In 2017 is, I think, proof enough that things will change when you least expect it. Don't yes. you feel that about this year? Sure. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a bit all over the place, right? Okay, so we are back with Sarah Mooney. I think it's important we figure out how you got into being a motivational speaker, being a life coach. Uh, what, what led you into it as a young person? Yeah, it was very interesting, Kobe. And uh, I, I di I, like everybody, I didn't know what I was doing. So this is what happened one day. Well, I come from Kirinyaga. Kirinyaga County. Yeah, and uh, my mother is a primary school teacher there. So this this uh, function taking place there, how you want to know the name of my school? It's called Mogwandi Primary School. Now, don't ask me what Mugwandi. that name is. Yes. All right. <laughs> Shout out to Mogwandi. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, there was this event that was taking place there. And some people were coming to donate things there. And so I said, my, ma my mom was making a big fuss of it. So I said, okay, mm, let me go and see what is happening there. Mm. So I went and uh, I just felt as I was going that I'll speak to the students. I don't know, I've never done this thing before. So when I got there, the first thing I met with the deputy of the school there, the deputy uh, uh, head teacher. And she says, Sarah, first of all, you have to speak to my candidates. I said, okay, what about? Then uh, she took me to to the class eight yeah. to the candidates there and it so happened that the father in charge of the region was there so you know this was a former student of ours and she introduced me very well and uh, so she said, so speak so what do i say so because she took me to the same class that i was in uh -huh. class eight because that's the primary school where i went so i told them you know what i sat on that seat in fact i used to sit right here mm -hmm. i wore the same uniform I had the same teachers. In fact, you know, Mr. So-and-so, he was my Kiswahili teacher. He's still there. And I read the same books. And you know what? I'm somewhere in life. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just said that. Do you know those children that opened up to me? They told me they are dreams. It's like they've never had anybody tell them that. And, you know, it was so amazing. Yeah. I felt so good. I felt like I've lived for something. For the first time, I felt something very different and very nice. And it was very natural. And then the father said, no, in fact, you have to speak to class seven. So I went to class seven. I told them the same thing. I went to class six. And from there, I started engaging me in very high conversations of how education is doing. I don't even know. You yes, know I, was, yeah. for me, I was just doing something that, that I spoke as if I know. Mm -hmm. Then from there, he took me to other schools. They realized, what is this? Then you know what happens, what opens your eyes is when you go somewhere, you're doing something that you really love. And then they give you something. They'll give me 5,000. I say, hmm. Okay, then uh, we go another time and I'm given 3,000. I say, wow, not bad. Then we go another. So all my Saturdays, remember I'm employed at this time. Yes. I'm employed, but at least Saturdays I was free and Sunday. So all my Saturdays were booked for schools there in Shark. So and I you were get getting an expected remuneration. Yeah, so a good thing. I'm saying, come yeah. on, come on. And I love doing this. So I, start get, I started getting these requests on Fridays. We're having a parents' day. Why don't you come and speak to parents? I'm saying, okay. So and I, w I find I'm given 15,000, 20,000. Hey, when I got 20,000, I say, ah, what is it? Come on. I want to do this. This is what I, I want to do for the rest of my life. I love doing this. So okay. this is what happened. I meet with a friend of mine. She, 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 she does. She has a children's home. I, how do I impact these students more? I feel I need to do more. I have something to give them. This is what I realized as a young person. So she tells me, you know what? There's actually a, a personal uh, development school that's opening, academy that's opening. And there's a meeting this evening. And you know what they say? When the student is ready, the teacher appears. Yes. So I went and met Pepe Minambo. If you know Pepe Minambo, he was... Yes, I do. Oh. Actually, he's an author. Yes, he's an yes. author and, and a very uh, good uh, speaker. So he was opening this academy. I just I went and I stepped into that hall. It was at KICC Amphitheater. And I heard there were great speakers. And I when I entered, I sat at the back because, you know, for the first time, you just sit at the back. Eh? And I looked and said... This is where I belong. I can do that. I can do what he is doing. Right. I know I can do this. I stand at that stage one time. And let me tell you, so has it happened. And the rest is history. The well. rest is history. We are here. Exactly. We are here, Kobe. Yes. <laughs> Give it up for her. Yeah. But 
before we speak to these beautiful young people, before, of course, um, that whole moment mm -hmm. of this is what I need to be doing, yeah. there's the reality. You have bills to pay. Ah, yes. You have to eat. You have to move back and forth in town, right? You need money. Yeah. You, ha you have a job. Yes. Right? And you've decided now, no, I'm going to be a motivational speaker. Tell us about that change and how you handled it. Exactly. That's very important. And many people find themselves, in, you know, thinking about that. So I, I was employed somewhere. I was actually doing, um, I, was, I was a key account manager. That's basically sales. Yeah. Uh, it's just called some nice names there. It's sales. <laughs> so, but anyway, my background was IT. My background was IT. I had studied IT at JQuart. And I, I find it's something, it's something that I had thought about, about three years before. And I said, my God, th this is not what I want to do. I, d I feel I can do this more to life than what I'm doing right now. I would always feel, you know, there's that part in you, Kobe, the greatness within you, it, it, it cannot be cheated. It cannot be cheated. When you are doing something mediocre, it will always know. Right. And you'll always feel you're not satisfied. You're being underused or underused or misused. Yeah, so I would always feel that. And I knew for me, for the next two or so years, I would I'll not be here and I don't want to be doing IT, even if it's what I've studied. So it's just that I hadn't really put a finger on what is it that I want to do. So the minute my eyes opened, let me tell you, I had a loan. I had a loan, I was servicing, I had commitments, you know, but that moment I, I thought about it for about one and a half years since I knew I want to be doing this, I want to be doing trainings, I want to be doing, you know, life coaching. About one and a half years and then it was time. So in 2015 I jumped. And that was it? I jumped, yes. I just went and told my, my MD and told her, you know what, I admire you. I, she's a lady. I admire you as a businesswoman, as an entrepreneur, and I'd like to be like you. I don't think I can be like you working for you. I need to be independent so that I can grow from the ground. I will come to you for advice. Yeah. She actually was, so she, uh, how old are you, Sarah? I told her, you should have even have done this three or four years ago. I started at 23. The kind of advice she gave me is what now made me now feel now I'm doing the right thing. And that's yeah. why you're here this yes. morning, to give yeah. people advice on yes. how they can take that leap. Exactly. I believe in big leaps. Don't you guys believe in big leaps? I really do. All right, so we have a young man here, all right? Um, who's got a question for you? All Hello, right. good morning. Hello, good morning. Kobe. How are you? Sir, I'm fine. Good. What's your name? I'm Joe Monotics. Okay. So you have a question for Sarah? Yes, I have a question. Hello, Sarah. Hello, how are you? Uh, there's this saying that goes, if you want to make enemies, mm -hmm. you just try and change something. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's too risky to like change because you might be risking losing allies and making your allies your enemies? Tell you allies, I'll tell, that's a whole other show, but okay. All right, very good. But you see, what is more important to you? Is it your own success and you accomplishing your dreams or it's making somebody happy? You could be making somebody happy, uh, happy at the expense of your own happiness. So what is important for you? What is important for you? Is it yourself? That's yeah, yeah, yeah I think it, it should be. I'll tell you something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people in the world mm. and and i i hope you guys are really hearing me right and i've been through this myself mm. a lot of people in the world get de their destiny derailed mm. by people yes it is not a situation it's not because if something huge happens to you a tragedy a death an accident you know you lose something um god knows how to take care of you okay but a lot of times we lose things we lose our destiny we lose our futures we lose something mm. wonderful that was going to happen to us because of people because mm. of the relationships that we're in because of the company that we're keeping mm. all right so you are feeling that your loyalty is to your squad and it's squad yangu jo and this is our routine happened to tunaendanga even tunafanyanga ask yourself this i want you guys to do an audit on your life mm. Ask yourself how far these people have taken you so far. Mm -hmm. What have they done for you that has helped you begin to walk in your destiny? That's what I always ask myself. And I'll say this and I'll say it very clearly. I have some very, very good friends that I will be an old show show and they will always be my friends. But there are many people in my life that I have let go and I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem walking away from people. Because I know that sometimes mm. it's just for a season. Some people come into your life, darling, for yeah. a season mm. and for a reason. And sometimes it's over. Have the divorce, have the funeral, say goodbye and keep it moving. Because you are here in this world for one thing only and that's your destiny mm. and your purpose. Yeah? You feel me? So yeah. you know there's that one person. Yeah. You know. 
And this person, that you, sh you should just tell them. When you're ready, come back. But right now, I just, I can't be with you. I, I can't yeah. be around you. Actually, yeah? what I've realized, Kobe, is that when you're in the pursuit of your passion, let me tell you, you will lose friends because there are those who just won't put up with this new person that you have become. There are people who will never take you seriously and they are your friends. Yeah. There are people who will never believe that you can succeed or you can be that you know, great person. They just don't believe it and they're your friends. And you know, this jealousy that comes in, jealousy and all these things, they just never believe. But the same way you lose friends, you'll find good friends or people who are also in the same, um, yeah, in the same passion and they will hold your hand. You'll find mentors, people who have walked that way who will hold your hand. So don't worry, let them be, let them stay. They'll actually look up at you and say, but they're this guy, this guy is doing serious stuff. They'll now start looking up to you. It's true. Yeah, but She's you will lose friends. Right. They'll start saying, okay, he's becoming too serious in life these days. He doesn't even have time for us. Yes. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. That's and you fine. know, I'll tell you something. It is, uh, and I'm sorry that we're going on about this, but I think people really do affect us a lot. Mm. Um, it, it is the hardest change, I think. The change yes. that is, is connected to someone you know, there's mm. emotion, there's love, yes. there's there's routine. You're used to this person. This is the person you talk to daily. Mm. You know, they are part and parcel of your life. But this person is derailing you. This person is holding you back. This person is not encouraging you. Mm. And all they're doing is pouring toxic energy into your life. It is the hardest thing to do. Change of changing jobs easy, school easy, courses. Because you guys, you know how to change courses like no other, right? <laughs> courses yeah, yeah, easy. Yeah. Changing yeah. lecturers, changing the hand plan for mm. the weekend. It's like this, but removing somebody. Because a lot of times these people won't just go away. Mm. You know, they just won't go. But it is so important that you just do it. Cut them off. Me, I, I have to have a whole, we have to have a whole show about cutting guys off. Yeah. We do, because sure. it is so, so crucial, guys. Mm. All right? Anyway, we have a second guy with a question. I think we might have answered his question in the, all that talking. Go on. Hi. Hi. What is your name? My name is Eric. Uh-huh. And uh, I got a question for Sarah. Go ahead. All right. um, I have two questions, actually. The first one is, um, how can you classify change, whether it's, uh, it's good or bad, in light of uh, conflict? Because you know where there's change, there's supposed to be, the result will, there will become a uh, conflict. And the other question is, if you have a platform where we can, uh, I can refer my friends mm -hmm. to come and see uh, about your work because for today I'm motivated, I'm inspired by you. Amazing, good wow, question. Wow, great. Yeah. Okay. You see, there's not every change is a change for the better. You can change for the worse. Mm -hmm. But here we are looking at change as a growth enabler because you want to grow your career. You want to grow your business. We are looking into, you want to grow your, your, your relationships. You want to grow uh, in them. So here we are addressing change as a growth enabler and as a progress, what we like call it, propeller. If you're already into, you know, into your passion, how do you progress? So we are looking at change that way. Otherwise, you can change for the worse. So if, 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 if you know, for you, you want to be, um, you know, you, you have your dreams, you want to be this person, you want to be this great, you want to build this great company, then you have to look at change very positively. It will have, it has its hard moments, you know, because it's not easy, you're dealing with things, n new things every day, but uh, they are doable and they are manageable. Yeah, so it's just the resilience and the persistence that will keep you going. The resilience and the persistence, yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. And so then I he wants to know where to find you. Yeah, so what I do is that I usually do trainings. Actually, I have a training program called Change to Excellence because I know that, you know, even as we're speaking about change, mm -hmm. it's not change that we really want. Yeah. Ultimately, it's not change that we really need. What we really need is excellence in what we are doing. So I call it Change to Excellence. Okay. Excellence is a life to be lived, but change is the way there. Yeah, so I usually do that, that training. I, I do it here in town. I also have an online one that I do. I, I usually I, I post a lot on my social media. I have a page, Sarah Mooney, you can find it. And I'm always organizing for talks in town or in schools. I, I usually I do those talks a lot. So I, I think I can get your contact after this and I'll be inviting you. Fantastic. Yeah. We're going to do one better, okay, for yeah. those who are at home. We yes. are going to connect you to Sarah. She's mm -hmm. online, very, very savvy. Her IT degree has come in handy. 
because she's using it, all yes, right? Yes, exactly. To, to, uh, for her digital footprint. So log on to our social media platforms where we'll connect you to Sarah. There's something I have to talk about before we take a break. Um, giving up. Yeah, we all give up a lot uh, when something is too hard, when we feel like we can't. And we always give up just, just before mm -hmm. the good things happen. Yes. Um, we quit the job, we walk away, we leave, we throw in the towel. Um, at what point, especially when you're going through change, mm -hmm. should you not give up? And when should you give up? Yeah, actually, there, there are battles that you usually say they're not worth fighting. Yes. Yeah, and you say, okay, this one, I give up on it, and I'll concentrate on things that actually inspire me. So, but what, what point uh, do you not give up? Yeah. Let me tell you, the, the, the hardest part, the hardest part in life or in whatever it is that you do, is all, always comes when you are just about achieving what it is that you want. Like, when you're finishing, maybe for those for students, if you f just when you're finishing your degree, you'll find maybe you have a project and it's usually the hardest. If you have a project, I don't know, you have to go and look for things, you have to do research. It's always the hardest, but you're just about finishing. You give up there and you waste a lot of time, you waste energy and you waste money. So, and anyway, if you had to make it, even if you do it again, you still have to go through the process. So, hold on. The difference between you and the person who has graduated is that they went through that extra mile. They, they stayed the cause. They did not get out. The reason why we celebrate David Rudisha or who else do we celebrate here? Lupita. Lupita. We love Lupita. Yes, yes. It's because these people, they did not give up. I mean, shooting that movie, I, but then I, show, I, 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 I saw watched it. it. Yeah. I watched it and it was, you know, you, some things that she went through that, I mean, or she, that personality she personifies was well, very hard very hard to go through but she stayed the course she did not give up if you want to be like her if you want to be like your mentors that person that you say i want to be like bill gates i want to be like you know those role models that you have you gotta stay that extra mile that's what they did that's the difference between them and you they stayed that they stayed the course for that extra mile they paid the price there is a price to pay for your great destiny and it is that you it's that part where you want to give up that's the price to pay and that is why people res we respect people that is why we adore people that is why we immortalize people like Nelson Mandela yes. because you know they stayed the course and they did it to the end Sarah you're awesome is super super awesome thank you sarah you were great thank you are you gonna come it. back oh yeah sure i'm Fantastic. gonna come back thank Kobe. you honey we appreciate yeah. it you were awesome